Zenos. Now, could you tell our viewers um, at home a bit more about yourself and Zenos Bank, please? So I've been in the online trading industry, in the fintech industry for over 20 years. And after experiencing kind of how fraction, uh, fragmented the, the, you know, the space for payments is, um, I decided to sell my group of companies and start a new bank. Oh, wow. So for the last four or five years, you know, I've been in this kind of uh, unexpected roller coaster of building a bank from scratch. That's absolutely incredible. I mean, not a lot of people have the guts to do that. So it's impressive to hear that you've done it. And, and what sets Zenos Bank apart from any other bank in the world? What, what do you guys do the best? So we started with kind of this idea that we wanted to solve a problem. And looking at the space, we realized that most of the neo banks and challenger banks and newcomers, you know, they're focusing only on the front end of the journey. They're making cooler apps, uh, easier uh, user journeys, you know, faster, sexier, you know, combining products and whatnot. Yeah. But you know, we realized that the challenge is that they're all bootstrapped on top of traditional banks, and really the limitation is driven by you know, their foundation. So for us to solve this problem, we had it to re-engineer this foundation. So we had to create a new kind of a bank. So you know, A, we wanted to be a bank, because I think you need to be a bank to solve this problem. But we realized that a lot of the services and products that banks provide nowadays essentially distract them from keeping up with the demands of modern society. So, um, you know, for us that meant designing a very vanilla bank, yep. focusing on very small number of things, yep. and doing that better than anybody else, and you know, expanding it to, to outside of our borders. You know what? What it sounds like to me is that you you looked at the uh, the fintech strategy of catering very well to a niche market and using that, but with the trust that comes along with a bank. And it's so fascinating to hear that perspective. And I'm really excited to see what you guys do in the future. But talking about nailing that back end architecture, let's look into what makes you different. And let's maybe talk about some of the technologies used to get there. For instance, artificial intelligence. How does Zenos Bank use that to facilitate the huge number of payments you have going through American payment systems? Yeah, yeah. So what we realized is that, you know, when a pro we're di digitally native, right? We were born in this modern age. So the user journey for our customer from the moment they download our app to, you know, when they start the process, you know, procrastinate, a few days later, continue the process. Yeah all this uh, converts into a lot of data points about our customer. Their behavior, where they are, what phone they use, uh, what country they're in, what SIM card they use. And what we do is, you know, A, we have to store this data safely somewhere within the context of regulations. And we've chosen to align ourselves with Microsoft uh, Cloud. Wow. So we use a lot of components from Microsoft and they've been like a great early partner uh, to help us figure this out. Uh, next is, using all these data points to essentially meet and exceed regulatory challenges. So what we realized or what we ended up building, uh, the aha moment is that although it seems that what we're doing is very risky because we don't meet any of our customers, they can come from over purely 150 digital. countries, purely digital, we realized that because it's digital, the, the things we know and we learn from the customer actually make this transaction, the banking, onboarding, KYC, AML, safer than the traditional model where some random person walks into a branch, some employee fills a piece of paper, it gets stored, it gets scanned, and then some a data entry person puts it into a system, fat finger mistakes and whatnot. <laughs> so, you know, essentially the data is always available and it's extremely enriched. You know, the next point, and this is why we chose Microsoft, is because, you know, there's, uh, embedded platforms that allow us to you know put this data to practice from our you know ERP system accounting to tools like Power BI that allow us allows us to manipulate big data to give real-time immediate insights to the people who need to kind of take decisions on it so we have all these dashboards we have all these alerts all these real-time things that uh, you know help on one side our employees run the bank better and more efficiently to a global scale, but at the same time to make this process as painless as possible for the customer. You know, that to kind of prove a point is we became the first bank to allow a foreigner to start and finish this account opening process cross-border in about 10 minutes. That's incredible. That's all it takes. And this was a process 
A, only available to ultra wealthy in the wealth management space. B, it takes months and months and thousands of dollars, requires trips, requires notarized documents and all these things. We were able to kind of uh, combine all of that into a very elegant, uh, you know, self-serviced process. I, I think that's absolutely amazing <laughs> because I mean, when you look at the American uh, you know, banking landscape and all the various different compliance matters and KYC across different states, so many things. to be able to facilitate that in one go-to app that you guys have created, that's really impressive. Thank you, thank you. Thanks. Now, one thing as well is obviously you've been bringing up payments. Now, payments across America are going through a wealth of changes. Not only are we seeing the clearinghouse uh, adapt to new regulations, international standards like ISO 222. Yeah, yeah. What's this going to mean for your customers? How do you at Zenus Bank facilitate those changes and make payments as seamless for all your customers as possible? So on, on the bank side, because we're modern, we, you know, we take into consideration all the latest innovation. So our APIs are, are, are built already on that standard. We didn't have to transform or transition. So that made things easier. We're members of SWIFT. We're a principal member of Visa. We have a large correspondent banking network. So you know, these are the things that we're trying to convert into products for our clients. But you know, what we realized is, you know, you can go into the nitty gritty of you know which rail is faster, quicker, cheaper. Yeah. But you know what happens is that you know the world is very fragmented place. So if you're born in Europe, you don't really see these challenges. You're looking for user experience and maybe a relationship with a brand that you know makes you feel good. But if you're in you know Colombia, it's actually illegal for the local banks to offer you a foreign currency account. Wow. Okay. You know, black and white. It's yeah. not about good or bad banks. It just they cannot offer it. Yeah. If you're in, you know, Argentina, that there's a, you know, an exit toll that's charged on your after-tax money you have in the local bank to spend it outside, shopping online, paying for your kids' school, you know, your holiday to Amsterdam. All these things are kind of modern challenges that the traditional banking system hasn't adapted to towards yet. So we kind of, you know, what we're looking to do is to kind of provide this unified access to things that people in you know, a small number of countries in the world take it for granted.